at 40, 40 uh, miles per hour. Excuse me. Do you have a speed limit of 40? Does that mean that you need to drive exactly 40 miles per hour? No, you need to drive 40 miles per hour or what? Or less. So you have to drive 40 miles per hour or less than that. So we can use an inequality to represent that. And that's kind of what we were looking at yesterday, looking at just the basics of inequalities, how to graph them. But that would be S is less than or equal to 40. It would be a speed limit of 40 miles per hour. Now you decide to go jump out on the interstate. What's the speed limit on the interstate? I-94. What's the speed limit? 70. But there's also another side of the speed limit. What's the minimum you have to drive on the interstate? Anybody remember? Not 60, a little less than that, quite a bit less than that. What's the minimum you have to drive on the interstate? You guys don't drive on the interstate much? So our S, our speed, has to be less than or equal to 70. And our speed has to be greater than or equal to 40. So our minimum amount of speed has to be 40 miles per hour. So legally, you could get pulled over if you're going less than 40 out on the interstate. Now that type of situation is called a compound inequality. And the compound inequality we can write as one single inequality. In that situation, that speed limit situation would be 40 is less than or equal to S. Our speed is less than or equal to 7. So there would be our compound inequality. So that shows, this inequality shows that my speed must be greater than or equal to 40, and my speed must be less than or equal to 70. So there would be my representation. See that not a lot of you have notes. You guys want any paper notes out there? You guys all doing notes on your phone. You want to take one? Now this particular compound inequality is called an and. Inequality. And any and inequality we can write as this one singular compound inequality. We'll also see what's called an or inequality. Or inequalities you can't write as one single compound inequality, but we can write each of those situations and we can start to graph those out as well. So that particular situation would be a would be a compound inequality. We'll look at one in a second here, which looks at uh, voting and margin of error, things like that, and uh, those would be represented with those compound inequalities. So below there, we've got an and inequality, and we're going to start to set it up to solve it out. So it says 2x plus 1 has to be greater than 9, and 2x plus 1 has to be less than 15. Now we can write this as one compound inequality. So we are going to rewrite these and inequalities as one compound inequality. So we're going to say 9 has to be less than 2x plus 1 has to be less than 15. Now that satisfies both of the inequalities that are being presented above. It's showing that 2x plus 1 is greater than 9. It's also showing 2x plus 1 is less than 15. So we are seeing both of those situations being made sure there. Now we have to start to solve and figure out what values for x are going to make this true. So I have a little 2x plus 1. So I'm working at using my inverse operation. So you probably noticed yesterday was very similar to lesson 7, where you just start to solve out for x. Just got to make sure anytime you multiply or divide by a negative, you flip the sign. But that 2x plus 1 is going to be where I'm going to start to undo and get x alone right here. Anytime I'm doing algebra with this x right here, I'm always working backwards through the order of operations. So the very first thing I'm going to undo is the last thing that's in order of operations, which is this plus 1. So i got to think in my head, what's the opposite of adding 1? So 
So inverse operation for plus one. What's the opposite of adding one? Subtracting one. So I'm going to use the inverse operation minus one. To keep my whole compound inequality balanced, I have to minus one from the nine. And I also have to minus one from the 15. So now I have eight is less than two X is less than 14. So there's my first step. Now I've got the plus one. I use that inverse operation of minus one to start to isolate this 2x right here. Now I look at my x again. My x is being multiplied by two, so I gotta think what's the opposite of multiplying by two? What's the opposite of multiplying? You guys hear me? What's the opposite of multiply? Divide. So I got to look at undoing a multiply by two. I got to divide by two. I'm going to divide by two, divide by two, divide by two. So now I've got a four is less than x is less than seven. So there would be my final compound inequality. So anytime I put a number that's greater than four or a number that's less than seven into these inequalities, or this inequality, I'm going to get a number between 9 and 15. So it's going to, it's going to let me fall in between. Them. Now we can start to graph it out. And when my graphs, I always make a 0 to show where 0 is. There we'll put a 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There's where we'll put a 7. And whenever we have a less than, greater than, we're going to use an open dot. Open dot. And then I look. X has to be greater than 4, which is going to go this direction. But X has to be less than 7, which is going to go this direction. So there would be my graph of 4 is less than X is less than 7. So all my solutions to that problem will lie somewhere between 4.1 and 6.9, you know, just uh, above 4 and below 7. In part B, we have an or compound inequality. And or compound inequalities we just saw individually. So we're not going to be able to put them together as one single. That's only for the and. So whenever we have an and, we're able to do that. But uh, with the or, we're not able to. So we're going to solve each of those individually. So we can divide by 3, divide by 3, and is going to be greater than or equal to 8. Over here, we'll subtract 4, subtract 4, 2n is less than or equal to 8, and is less than or equal to 4. So there's our two separate inequalities. So our two situations are n could be greater than or equal to 8, or n could be less than or equal to 4. There's my two, two possibilities. Now from there, I'll look at graphing each of those. And you will see a little different look to this graph based on this or inequality. So again, I'll put a zero right here. One, two, three, four. There's a four, five, six, seven, and eight. I want to have less than or equal to, so now I'm going to use a close dot. So I can close that in, close dot, close that. And my little icon's getting in the way. Sorry about that. But this was my 4, closed up. This is my 8. Now I look at n. n has to be greater than or equal to 8. So here's my 8. n has to be greater than or equal to that. So i got to think about what numbers are greater than or equal to 8. Well, 8 is a solution, obviously. But who can give me another solution to n is greater than or equal to 8? What number could be a solution? What's the number greater than 8? 9. 10. So you got to put yourself in the situation. What number for n could be greater than or equal to 8, 9, 10, 11, so on? And that's going to be then where I'm going to draw my arrow solutions. That's going to be going to the right. So there would be n is greater than or equal to 8. n is less than or equal to 4, 3, 2, 1, those type of numbers. That's going to be going to the left. So or inequalities, we're going to see... What's called a disjunction, they're not going to have, well, they go towards each other, or inequalities are going to go opposite of each other. So our and inequality up above, 
we can write it as a single compound inequality or, or below. We have two separate situations, and we see our arrows going opposite direction. Am I okay if I delete this one? You guys caught up on your notes for that? Okay. Lastly, then, we'll look at uh, writing a compound inequality from some statistics down there. It says a poll shows that 78% of the voters plan to participate in a lo local election. The margin of error for the poll is plus or minus 3.5%. So if you can't uh, quite see what that says, I'll zoom it in. That's a plus minus 3.5. Write a compound inequality to represent the actual number of voters who plan to participate. And we'll just say uh, V, V is going to equal our voters. So we'll use the variable V for that. Now, margin of error. So what happens is when, when in a poll you're trying to figure out the results, so like of an election or, or how many people are voting, you're going to take a sample of people. So when uh, you hear the, the numbers about uh, who's winning, Biden and Trump, Trump's leading by 2%, Biden's leading by eight points here. They're not actually asking every single voter. They're only asking about maybe 100, 200 people, their thoughts. Probably a little more than that, four or 500 people, their thoughts. And that sample then doesn't actually represent the whole population. So you have what's called a margin of error. So they have the results from that sample, but then that's not going to be the total actual results if you polled everybody in the whole U.S., so you have a little margin of error. Now, plus or minus means you add 3.5% and you also subtract 3.5%. So I'm going to show my work over here on the side. I'm going to take 78 plus 3.5. So that means according to this poll, if there's this margin of error, there could be up to 81.5% of people voting. But also, I got to look at the minus side, minus 3.5%. There could be as low as 74.5% people vote. There's about a 7% window of where the actual number of voters could be. Now we can write that as a compound inequality. We can say 74.5%. I'm not going to put the percent sign. It's less than or equal to B is less than or equal to 81.5%. And there would be our, our compound inequality. So our voters are going to be somewhere between 74.5% and 81.5%. So based on that sample, we can't say for sure what the percent is. We have to give some type of difference that could change. And that's where, um, where like right now when they're doing the, the samples, if there is overlap in that window, then that means that the state or the overall election could go either way. There's an overlap, but if there is no overlap, then it's pretty easy to tell that one person's leading the other, so on and so forth. But that's what we're looking at today. Now uh, we will look at the worksheet for lesson 10. So uh, similar to yesterday, if you want to, or uh, sorry, Monday, if you want to um, use that drawing tool, you can just digitally do your assignment, and then you can send that back to me.